Okay, hi everybody. Today I'm going to be talking about physics constrained low dimensional models for plasmas, first principles, and data driven approaches. Um, this is based on a paper that is now on archive and in revision. And uh, it's the code is available at two different GitHub repos. Uh, one is an example, and one is sort of a devoted uh, GitHub repo. And uh, this work was done with my collaborators here at the University of Washington, Kyle Morgan, Chris Hansen, and Steve Brunton. Uh, so why work on reduced order modeling? Uh, so reduced order modeling uh, is typically abbreviated ROM. Uh, so why, why ROMs? And in particular, why ROMs for plasmas? Um, so it turns out most realistic plasmas are nonlinear and multi-scale. What this means is that codes which you use to model and simulate them are going to be very computationally expensive. So magnetohydrodynamics, or MHD, or full kinetics, uh, these are two different models which are used uh, to model plasmas, and both are very computationally expensive for these reasons. Um, before I get to why that's such an issue for plasmas, uh, let me start by saying what we call coherent structures are ubiquitous in fluids and nonlinear systems generally. What that means is uh, there are structures in the dynamics which contain a very large portion of the energy um, that sort of evolve in a uh, self-consistent way. And if we can change to a basis or, or a model which exploits that, that extra structure in the dynamics, uh, we can potentially get some gains in efficiency. Um, so that's, that's true of many nonlinear systems, and in, it's true of plasmas as well for, for many systems. And um, in particular, what we're going to be interested in is can we build reduced order models that are so low, di low dimensional, we can actually use them for real time control of plasma instabilities. Uh, for instance, like edge localized mode or ELMS. Um, so this, this is actually a picture of an edge localized mode in the MAST tokamak in England. And you can see from the emission here, uh, it's got this complicated 3D helical structure. And um, ideally, we'd like to be able to forecast, uh, understand, and control these things. Um, but the key word here is real time, meaning that we need models which are not so computationally expensive. And so we need to search for reduced order models. Um, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, so I should mention before that the way this, this the control of instabilities is typically looked at in the tokamak literature is that you typically do instability identification with neural networks. So what you do is you take 10,000 experimental discharges, you classify each one as big instability happened or it didn't, and then um, you train your neural network to identify a parameter space where uh, instability is likely to happen. Um, so these, these are really useful techniques, uh, but it's not really the sort of real-time uh, forecasting and control you might get uh, with, with an interpretable uh, model for how the plasma is going to evolve. Uh, and as I've said, this motivates low dimensional and physics constrained representations of plasmas. So we'll see what we can get with this. So uh, what are the contributions of this particular work? Um, so we're going to define what's, what, what we're calling a dimensionalized uh, POD, or proper orthogonal decomposition. Um, specifically for plasmas which are described by MHD. We're going to derive a so-called POD Galerkin model for a particular form of MHD. And uh, then we're going to use constrained data-driven nonlinear model building methods, uh, such as the sparse identification of nonlinear dynamics, uh, or CINDY method. And, um, and then we're going to take this methodology that we've built and show the forecasting performance on uh, these MHD simulations of a particular experiment here at the University of Washington called uh, HIT-SI, uh, which is a sphere MAC. So um, to get into the uh, nuts and bolts here a little bit, uh, what we're going to do is define maybe a not so obvious uh, thing. So we have this vector Q up here, which is uh, the velocity, magnetic field, and temperature, which are the fields you would typically evolve in a magnetohydrodynamic model. And all we've done is put them all into a single vector Q, and we've normalized them to magnetic field units. And if you want the exact definitions, I've written them down here and here. And uh, then you can notice something interesting about inner products with Q with itself, which is that it's proportional to the total plasma energy. And in fact, we use that later to um, to constrain the structure of the model we derive 
uh, with, with a power balance argument. Um, but it's, it's somewhat non-trivial, so please look at uh, the, the paper if you're interested in that. Uh, so that's, that's what we do. We, we make these simple definitions. Then we go ahead and we do a proper orthogonal decomposition. Um, one second. Okay, there we go. And um, so a POD, uh, what you typically do is you do a singular value decomposition. And what we're taking an SVD of is this data matrix X over here. <laughs> and um, what it is, is you take a bunch of measurements of your vector Q. And uh, so we're taking D measurements here. And then uh, you take each of these measurements at time snapshots T1 through uh, Tm here. So uh, we build up this data matrix in space and time. And then what you do is you, you take an SVD, which gives you uh, these matrices U sigma V star. And you, get, uh, you break up this matrix into a set of coherent modes, which uh, have spatial modes in U, uh, a bunch of singular values that tell you how much energy each of those modes has in uh, this matrix sigma. And you get a bunch of temporal modes in V. Um, so this is really useful uh, because we can now expand our like full set of measurements in space and time as some mean field plus some expansion in this POD basis where these are the spatial modes and these are the temporal modes. And the singular values in, uh, in sigma we've just absorbed into the spatial modes for convenience. So all we did is we, we took this vector Q at a bunch of space-time locations and we expanded it in this POD basis. Now, uh, two is going to be how we actually use this for something interesting. So it turns out the particular MHD model we're using, which we're using because we can write it like this. Um, in other words, this equation is saying that the MHD model is quadratic in the vector Q, quadratic nonlinearity. And um, what that allows us to do is we take this system of PDEs, uh, which is this whole MHD model we've chosen, and then we plug in this expansion in POD modes, and we utilize the orthonormality of these spatial uh, modes, chi j. And when we do that, we take inner products around, and we get rid of all the spatial dependence. So we transform a system of PDEs to a system of ODEs. Um, and basically, this, this is a really nice uh, reduction. All these uh, coefficients are complicated spatial inner products in principle. Um, but what we found is a quadratic nonlinear system of ODEs for the temporal POD modes of this vector Q. Um, and so it, in principle, we could uh, calculate all these coefficients and uh, forecast our plasma in this way. It turns out that can be uh, quite laborious as well. And so what we instead do is use this as a model for uh, actually discovering the dynamics directly from data uh, with the so-called Cindy algorithm. And what Cindy does is it basically says, OK, we're going we're gonna to search for uh, DDT of A equals some function of, uh, of these temporal modes. And we're going to build this candidate library theta of A multiplied by these coefficients, which tells you uh, how strong is each candidate in that library. Um, so it solves this uh, complicated, sparse um, identification problem, and at the end it comes out with a system of nonlinear ODEs describing the evolution of these temporal modes. And it turns out we can actually uh, constrain the model building process by uh, thinking about um, power balance in the particular system we're looking at. So this, this is really nice, and uh, then we can uh, use this to actually check how well does this forecast on these uh, simulations of HIT-SI. So uh, that's sort of the methodology that's presented in this work. I'm just going to show some results now, and I'll conclude in the next uh, slide or two. OK, one second. There we go. OK, uh, so what we do is we then we, we train this model, and then we test it on a bunch of testing data. and. Uh, I, I should mention these are fully 3D simulations and a fully 3D analysis, uh, but I'm just showing you 2D slices of the results to uh, sort of make it easy to visualize how well it's doing. And um, what you see here is that uh, you, we're going to compare the full simulation data all the way over here 
with our identified model uh, forecasting performance on this new data. Um, and it, so not only are you going to see that it, it captures the dependence quite well, let me turn this on. Great. So it's, it's capturing the temporal dependence, and in fact, it's also capturing some of these uh, smaller scale spatial structures quite well. And uh, importantly, I just want to point out that the spatial dimension, i.e. the number of grid points in the simulation that's running here, is about 460,000. And the dimension of this data-driven model below me is seven. So with just seven temporal modes, uh, we can forecast in the future with really uh, quite good accuracy. And uh, this method can also be computed so fast uh, that we can actually do this in real time. And if we're trying to do some real-time control, uh, we can build the model uh, every uh, time window that we need it. So uh, just to conclude here, the, the key takeaways is that we have this novel theoretical framework uh, for reduced order modeling of these compressible MHD fluids. Uh, the framework guides a data-driven process uh, and it performs really well in these simulations that we look at. F there's a lot of future work here. There's a lot of interesting ways we can go. Uh, one of which is looking at algorithmic CINDY advances in, in improving the stability, accuracy, and dimensionality of the identified models. Uh, it turns out this is already the subject of really intense research. Uh, I just m mentioned a, a, a few um, papers below, but please look at the paper if you're interested for, for where the field is heading generally. And uh, other advances include using variants of the MHD model here and adaptation of this uh, to real experimental data. We have to worry a little bit more about noise and sparsity um, and, and other experimental issues. So uh, that's all I wanted to present today. I hope this uh, has been interesting. And please, if you're interested, uh, take a look at the paper. So thanks so much. <laughs>